Hello, welcome. Take a moment, read the problem, and then press play and we'll solve it together. All right, so they want us to find algebraically the zeros for p of x equals x cubed plus x squared minus 4x minus 4, and then graph it. All right, so when we're finding the zeros, we just set this equal to 0 and then try and factor it any way that we can. I'm going to factor by grouping here. I notice the first two terms have a greatest common factor of x squared. So x squared times x to the first is x cubed, right? And you can always figure that out by dividing the term by x squared. So x cubed divided by x squared, that's x to the first, plus 1, because x squared divided by itself is just 1. So this is the same thing, but I've factored out x squared. In the second term, what do I see in common here? I see a 4. So I'm going to factor that 4 out. If I divide negative 4x by 4, um, by negative 4, excuse me, and I wrote a negative sign in here to account for that um, subtraction happening. If I divide negative 4x by negative 4, what do I get? I just get x, right? Negative 4x divided by negative 4. The 4s cancel, and I just get x. Negative 4 divided by negative 4 itself is a positive 1. Now, what I have is common factor. I have x plus 1. That could be factored out. And what's left is x squared minus 4. So I have x plus 1 times x squared minus 4. And you might remember that x squared minus 4 is a difference of squares. And for difference of squares, we're going to get, right, um, to remind you over here, a squared minus b squared always factors to a minus b. So the square root of the first and second term subtracted times the square root of the first and second term added. Right. This is the difference of two squares. So we get x minus 2, the square root of the first and second, and then x plus 2. Now, we want to know what x values make this whole product 0. It's when x plus 1 is 0. So the first answer is x equals negative 1. The second one is when x is 2. And the third one is when x is negative 2. Now, the multiplicity of each of these terms, in other words, the exponents out here are all 1. If the multiplicity is 1, or odd in general, the polynomial will cross the x-axis at these roots. So I'm going to scroll down and show you what I mean. So here's negative 1, let's say. I'm going to label this as negative 1. And then this would be 1, this is 2, and this is negative 2. Now, this feels a little bit crunched to me, so I'm going to actually spread that out a little bit. I'm going to go, I'll make, let me erase that and just start over because I'm tracking all the numbers. I don't want that. I try to space these things out so I don't confuse myself. So this is 1, and this will be 2. Be a little bit nicer. And then negative 1 and negative 2. So our roots, I'll color them this way, are negative 1, 2, and negative 2. So the question is, what does this polynomial do? Does it go like this? right? Does it go like this, something, right? How does it behave? Well, the first thing we notice is that the multiplicities are all odd. So this polynomial has to cross all those roots, either like this or like this. Has to cross, has to cross at the, at the root here, cross the x-axis. Not crossing would be like this, it would bounce back. If that's a crossing, this is not a crossing. But the, the next thing we should look at, if we go back, is the, lead, the coefficient of the leading term. Leading term is the term that with the highest power. So whether it's the front or back, it doesn't matter. If it's the highest power, it's the leading term. And the coefficient here is 1. It's positive. Now, if it's positive and an odd degree, let's scroll down here. There's basically two cases we can look at here. So I'll draw a y in an x-axis and a y in an x-axis really quick. And the idea is that uh, if you remember x cubed is something like this, right? This is, it should be more symmetrical, sorry. Let's say that's, this is my rough sketch of x cubed. Notice that as x is increasing this way, the output is also going up. So as x approaches positive infinity, y also goes up towards positive infinity, and as x approaches negative infinity, y approaches negative infinity. What's amazing is that this is the behavior of all odd functions 
with a positive coefficient. So I don't, the end behavior is always like this. We don't really know what happens in the middle here, but the end behaviors are always consistent with this, x cubed. And that's true for any odd leading, any polynomial with an odd leading term. That as x approaches infinity, y approaches infinity. Right? So this is for this is for x to the n where n is odd. And as x approaches negative infinity, y will approach negative infinity. Uh, and then if the uh, where n is odd, excuse me, n, the leading coefficient, n is odd, this is sloppy, sorry, where a is greater than 0 and where n is odd. But what happens if a is less than 0, if it's a negative coefficient? Well, that's going to reflect it over the x-axis, right? So let's say we have negative 1x cubed. So what's happening here is as x approaches positive infinity, y approaches negative infinity. Right? And as x approaches negative infinity, as x is getting smaller and smaller and smaller, y approaches positive infinity. And this is true for any polynomial with a leading odd coefficient, odd power, odd x, <laughs> any polynomial with a leading um, term with an odd degree, like an odd power, so, and where a is negative. So a times x to the n, where a is less than 0 and where n is odd. And again, I'm saying that the degree is odd. n is the degree or the exponent of the leading term. Now, just we don't need it here in this problem, but for even functions, let's look at even real quick. For even functions, um, you think about x squared, for example, um, something like this. right? So for x squared, oh boy, that's not the best. Um, imagine that's a symmetrical parabola. Uh, if, right, if we have a is positive and x to the n where n is even, what's really beautiful is that all of those polynomials, even degrees and positive leading coefficients, will, will have n behaviors similar to x squared. Now we don't necessarily go on in the middle. It can do all kinds of funky stuff, like go up and down, right? But eventually, those n behaviors will be the same as x squared. And if we make um, the, co the leading coefficient negative, it will do this. It'll essentially flip it around, right? And that's where if a is less than 0 and x to the n is even, so even degree, this will happen, right? What, what do I mean by this? As x approaches positive infinity, y approaches negative infinity. As x approaches negative infinity, y approaches negative infinity. And here, y will approach positive infinity for x approaching positive or negative infinity. They're opposites. How do we use all this information? Well, in our case, we have an odd degree with a positive coefficient. So right away, I'm thinking it's something like something like x cubed in the end behavior. So I'm thinking about this and this. So that means I have to come down from here. Now what do I do with this root? I cross the root because the multiplicity, that's the power of that root, is odd. If it's odd, it's going to cross. Then I've got to come back up at some point. Now I should find the y-intercept. Um, if I plug in 0 for x, you get 0 cubed to find the y-intercept, plus 0 squared, 0, minus 4 times 0 is 0, minus 4. It's got to cross negative 4. So we're going to put negative 1, 2, 3, 4 here, right? It's got to cross that. Uh, but actually, my scale is 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4 down here. So negative 1. I'll put one of those dashes there. Negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. And that's going to force me to stretch this a little bit differently. So this is going to come down up through the intercept. It's going to cross again at negative 1 because the multiplicity was odd. And then it has to cross again at negative 2 because the multiplicity was odd there as well. So my end behaviors look like x cubed. Inside that, the multiplicities tell me where I'm going to cross. And I want to capture the y-intercept. Really what they're looking for is to see, can you capture the x-intercepts and uh, y-intercepts. That's usually the thing that they are checking that you can do here. 
Now, the exact degree of the turning of the polynomial, like how high it comes here or where the, the turn is, is at negative 4, doesn't really matter as much. Um, as long as you're capturing uh, where it crosses and how, I, I think you um, will get full credit. I'm just checking over um, checking over this. I, I can't tell if they would give full credit for this or not. What do I mean by this? Well, really, this function, if you put it on the graph and calculate it, you notice that at 1, there is a point lower than negative 4, right? So let me just adjust this graph slightly. And I believe it's at negative 6. Let me just check this. The calculator we do, but we'll do it by hand here. If I plug in 1, I get, let's do the math, we get 1 cubed plus 1 squared, so 1 plus 1, minus 4 times 1, which is 4, minus 4 again. So we have 1 plus 1, which is 2, minus 4, minus 4, so 2 minus 8 is negative 6. So at the input of 1, the output is negative 6. So if you have um, an input-output pair that's easy to work with, you can do that. You can actually, you should show that in your graph, I'm saying. So let me just go back here. Let me clear all this off, and I'll show you what I mean. You want to get the best graph you can reasonably. They don't specify exactly how much you have to do or what is reasonable or unreasonable. Um, but here, negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now I'm running into a problem, I'm running out of room. That's okay. My y scale does not need to be the same as my x scale. So I'll go by 1's here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I know now that um, at the input of 1, output of negative 6 here, and at 0, it crosses negative 4, something like this, right? Dips down, it's a minimum, comes up, looks like this. Now, how did I know that this is a minimum right here? Well, there are mathematical techniques for that, but really, you could just capture that on the calculator. So here, if we go to y equals, and we clear this off any old information, we have x cubed um, plus x squared minus 4x minus 4 and I put that all in the exponent, oh boy try that again, x cubed plus x squared minus 4x and then minus 4 so if we go, I'm going to, I'm going to press zoom 6 to do a standard standard zoom so you can see the shape of it, we got that. And if you go to your table, you can see um, how the graph behaves. And you can see here between um, 2 and 0, right? Between 0 and 2, the lowest point is negative 6 right there. Or in the graph, if you press second, um, you can see that the lowest point is this point right here. You press second trace, you can get the minimum by pressing 3 and then going a little bit to the left, enter a little bit to the right of it, enter, and then get pretty close to it, hit enter again, it'll show you what that point is. Um, and here, I'm getting a weird approximation, 0 0.8685, negative 6.06. .06. So that tells me that actually there is a lower point on the graph. It's about here, right? So this actually is not the absolute minimum within that interval. So I misspoke, sorry. <laughs> sorry if I, I so, okay, let's backtrack, oh boy. So um, on the regents in general here, they would definitely give you full credit for this answer. And they might even give you full credit for the other answer I showed. I had the graph come down kind of like this and turn at the y-intercept. It's generally my belief that if you get the roots and the intercepts, they will give you full credit. Now, I'm adding this point in because there's a dip there below the intercept. So if you know that the graph somewhat dips below the intercept, I guess you should include that. I should say that. To be mathematically precise, though, I mean, to go even further, we could say, well, there is actually a minimum kind of like right here, a little bit lower. But you don't have to capture those little details when you're graphing this. However, I would argue that they should be giving you a graph where the minimums are, and maximums in these between these roots are somewhat easier to find. Anyway, well, I hope that helped, and thank you.